when you're reviewing your weather brief, do you skip over the surface analysis chart? Do you find it confusing? Lines everywhere, symbols you vaguely remember from ground school? Do you quietly hope that your instructor or the examiner doesn't ask too many questions about it? Well, here's the truth. Once you know what to look for, the surface analysis chart can provide an incredible amount of information at a glance. I'm going to give you five things that will help you interpret surface analysis charts in under five minutes. Item number one is pressure systems. High pressure systems are generally your friends. If you see a blue H on the chart, it doesn't mean perfect weather, but it usually means fewer surprises. Low pressure systems, the red L's on the charts, are the weather makers. They're colored red for a reason. If there's something interesting happening in the atmosphere, clouds, precipitation, turbulence, you can almost guarantee that a low pressure system is involved. So when you see a low on the chart, be suspicious. In addition to the highs and lows, you should also be on the lookout for troughs. These yellow dashed lines on the chart indicate elongated areas of low pressure extending from a low pressure system. Because lows indicate rising air, these troughs can also lead to bad weather. Item number two is fronts and air mass boundaries. By definition, a front is where different air masses meet. Because these air masses often differ in air temperature and moisture content, when you cross a frontal boundary, you can expect changes in wind direction, wind speed, air temperature, or all three. In addition, if your route of flight takes you across a frontal boundary, it can mean turbulence, poor visibility, or storms. Unfortunately, frontal boundaries aren't as distinct as the lines that appear on the map. These different air masses usually slide over or under each other, so the impacts can actually exist hundreds of miles on either side of the map symbol. Another boundary type is the dry line. This is often found in the south central U.S. and is one of the more deceptive symbols on the chart. It doesn't look as significant as a cold or a warm front, but it separates moist air from dry air, which can be the perfect recipe for explosive thunderstorms. If your flight takes you in the vicinity of this line, you should be on the lookout for convective activity. The third item you can get from the surface analysis chart is wind direction. Wind flow generally follows the isobars. In the northern hemisphere, winds generally flow outward and clockwise around high pressure systems. Around low pressure systems, they flow inward and counterclockwise. With this rule of thumb, you can start predicting wind direction across a huge region long before you ever look at a METAR. For example, in this chart, we can see the low pressure over northern Wisconsin. Since the wind should be flowing inward and counterclockwise around this low, the surface winds will likely be coming from the northwest over southern Minnesota. Alternately, if we look at the high pressure systems over Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado, we can see that the clockwise flow around these will likely mean the surface winds will be coming from the north over eastern Colorado. How might this be useful when planning a cross-country flight, especially a long one? Please drop your thoughts in the comment section. Item number four is wind velocity. Look at the spacing of the isobars. The closer together they are, the stronger the wind velocity. If you look at the isobars around this low in northeastern Canada, we can see that they're packed very tightly together. This tells us we should expect higher wind velocities and perhaps some turbulence. Widely spaced isobars equal lighter winds. If we look at this low over the western edge of North Carolina and Virginia, we see the isobars are more widely spaced and we therefore expect the winds to be lighter. Item five is precipitation. The surface analysis charts published as part of the ForeFlight and 1-800-WX brief weather briefings show actual precipitation occurring at the time the chart was created. This includes rain, snow, sleet, freezing rain, etc. This snapshot of what's actually happening makes the surface analysis chart a powerful cross-check against other forecasts and can help you see the bigger weather picture. For example, if we look at this chart, we can see that the lows over eastern Texas and western Tennessee and their associated fronts seem to be generating an area of widespread precipitation. On the other hand, this low over the northwest corner of Texas isn't generating much at all. Again, how might you use this information for your flight planning? So the bottom line is, is that I would urge you not to skip the surface analysis chart. This source of information is one of the fastest ways to get a big picture view of the weather as a pilot. And that's not just check ride knowledge. That's good aeronautical risk management and risk mitigation. Now, spotting the pressure systems, fronts, winds, and precipitation is step one. 
Knowing what kind of weather is associated with pressure systems and fronts is step two, and I break down exactly how to predict that weather in this video. Thanks for watching. Fly safely, and I will see you next time.